Good afternoon and welcome back to the channel. Eric and I are harvesting some beautiful ripe raspberries. They're probably a little bit overripe actually. Um, and these are on our own property. We're also going to be harvesting some mushrooms here too, which is just awesome. Anytime we can forage things on our own property, I think I'm just thrilled about that. It takes a long time to learn about plants here in Alaska and the environments they grow in and the uses. So over the years, we've uh, learned places that we can go harvest things. And being that we moved this year, we have to learn that all again. So that's okay, we're up for the challenge. We've got a really hot day here and the mosquitoes are out. The mosquitoes love the foliage. So anytime you step into a grassy area or anywhere near the tree line, the mosquitoes will find you in a heartbeat. So these are wild raspberries. They're a little bit um, smaller than like something you'd find in the store, but that does not mean that they are not packed with delicious flavor. We harvest blueberries a lot here in the fall and those are so concentrated with flavor and they're really like the best blueberries I've ever had. And these raspberries are really good too. I was surprised. I kind of thought that they were a little bit smaller small and not going to be worthwhile, but they are delicious. And they seem to be really prolific this year. I don't know if that's typical. Um, we have this huge patch right here. It's just absolutely massive. I don't know if you can see all of them behind me. And there's a bunch of others just all around here, completely surrounding the area. We have some folks that are coming to pick this patch today. They also enjoy raspberries and we're going to be picking another patch closer to the bees. There's also raspberries over there. Alaska has so many wonderful plants that you can eat and berries is definitely a top one of them. There's a lot of berries that grow here naturally. We really enjoy spending our time picking them, making use with them, and if you can learn to identify them, it, I really think it's worth your time because I don't think you're going to be disappointed with the flavor. All right, we're going to take a little gander around this area and then we're going to head over to where we're picking raspberries. Oh, these little guys have huh? And then there's that. There's two really big patches over there. Definitely looks like this area was cleared when um, someone was clearing this lot, but they didn't actually remove the dirt. So I don't really know why there are so many raspberries here. It seems really localized to just two different spots on our property. They spread through their roots and send up new shoots or canes is what they're called. Why are you crying? You upset? So this is just a huge sea of them. I'm really not even sure how long it would take to pick because this would take a while. That's for sure. There's more over here. For wild raspberries? Look at that, that's beautiful. You almost don't even need to plant raspberries. If you fertilize these and water them. One there, one there. A few different patches out here. We like to start on the worst one and work our way towards the best. And then we're working our way that way. Um, we're not getting them all off of them. Some of them are small, some of them only have like two little berries. So we're just kind of going for the big ones. But these things, I'm telling you, they are so delicious for a little tiny, a wild raspberry. Let's head over to the good one. There's not that many here over at all, huh? We'll have to go back to the beginning. There's a pretty good patch over here. Okay. Oh, that was a really good one. It's aggressive. But you know, every time I come out and do the bees, they're biting really bad by the bees. I think they like this grass. Maybe when we mow it down and put it in the garden, it'll... Do you see them? We're not one to complain about. We're not one to complain about mosquitoes, but um, we've actually used a little bit of spray today and just a tad. I don't know. We're gonna do something different. Eric got the right idea, and he's got a bunch of gear on. I'm gonna probably go do the same because there's no way we're gonna be able to head into the forest and harvest mushrooms if they're bad, this bad, out in the open areas. It's really bad today. They will bite through Look at games, that. though. Uh, no way. I may be hot, but I ain't gonna get bit. Very nice. So ripped their paw on my... Well, he can, he can make his own decisions. I got my rain jacket on and we headed back to the best patch. Eric definitely beat me. He got quite a bit. And this is gonna be awesome. This is totally enough for jam. I'm going to be freezing these because we don't have intentions to make it right away, but I'm really excited to make them. I think it's going to be delicious.
We've got some steaming hot compost. This is actually some horse manure we were able to pick up. We had to interrupt our foraging day the other day because this was very important to us to get. We're hoping to rebuild our garden here in the next so we're gonna take a few years and we won't be starting that until next season, but we need to get a jump on the soil. So we're gonna be bringing our compost and soil back at our old place up here, but we also need to get a lot more fertilizer or amendments like uh, compost like this. This is horse manure that has already started to break down, but it's also still breaking down. And you can tell by the temperature, it is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We're very lucky to get our hands on this close by and I'm hopeful that we can get a lot more because we're definitely going to need it. We're gonna carry on today and pick some stuff. First thing I'm grabbing is some fireweed. I have been very hesitant to pick any of it this year. We have a lot of it on this property and I really love it for tea. I have noticed in this particular patch and, and even that other patch, there's just like a really insane amount of pollinators on it every time I come out. So it, whether it's morning, midday, or even late in the evening. So one little flower like this will have multiple uh, pollinators on it. And I didn't feel like I should pick it because they were utilizing it. And especially our honeybees were using it. I'm not really certain if this area has a lot of natural things for them to forage. It doesn't seem like there's that many flowers here comparatively to our old location. So uh, now that it's the end of the season, the fireweed's pretty much done, I'm just gonna grab a little bit. Eric and I also have a plan to put like a proposed road right in this area because we want the garden to go there and we're going to be relocating our chicken coop kind of back over there. Is that your traveling cat? She's She's got issues. Oh my. All right, enough with the berries and the flowers. We're gonna head to the back forest. We're gonna go look for some mushrooms. On your first specimen? Oh, look at these ones. They're not a oyster mushroom, but they're grown out of an aspen. Look at that, right on the wood. One there. One there. Pooped. Yeah. It's all grass poop. Nice find. So we're back here uh, doing a little investigation, and I guess we're having like a field trip. And Eric was already uh, finding mushrooms, not the right ones yet. But I wanted to show you these really cool plants that we have. First off, there's a hole here and, I'm, and there's a mush. Looks like that coral mushroom. I think the uh, squirrels, I think he's stashing them there. So the squirrels eat mushrooms too, because they were popping up probably two plus weeks ago. They were popping up everywhere out in the meadow. And I was like dodging them, making sure not to step on them, but they have just since disappeared. And I'm pretty sure the squirrels are eating them. So this is a stash of multiple different mushrooms in here. But right next to it is another berry called timberberry or pumpkin berry. I think these are kind of new to us. We may have seen them before, but we've never tried to eat them. They're definitely edible, but a lot of people don't. I don't think a lot of people really like them. And I tried one the other day. They're not that bad. They're not wonderful, but they're also not that bad. They kind of taste just like a persimmon. So if you're a fan of persimmons, I bet that these would be right up your alley. And they have some meaty flesh, but they have the biggest seed. It's like a coriander seed. So I don't know if you were gonna use these um, how you would use them because it's just you'd almost want to take that out. I haven't tried to eat that but it's just a uh, huge. I did read somewhere online someone that puts them in meatloaf or ground burgers at like moose meat and I thought that that sounded pretty delicious so I may give that a go and this one over here is a good example why they're called pumpkin berries because it has little indentations on it. We're in his uh, forest eating, so he's probably, we found a stash is what he's mad about. That's a mushroom stash. You see it, right? Another really cool berry we have is 
known as low bush cranberry or lingonberry and we had these back at our other place but we never really harvested them they're supposed to be really good these are unripe you can tell they're totally green um, I think that most people harvest these a little bit after a frost so that's pretty typical for a lot of the berries here they get really ripe near the end of the season and once that frost happens they get so tasty so I'm not gonna try these ones yet but we're probably gonna come back out and pick them um, a little later in the season they're only in this forest area I believe we have a really similar looking plant called knick knick and that grows out in the more gravelly area of our property um, so these are just back here with the forest. This is a spruce forest, so it's predominantly just white spruce, but there's also quaking aspen, and there's a bunch of lichens, and I don't know that much about lichens, but I know that you can use them, so I'm gonna have to research that. There's this one on this tree, and then the floor is just covered with all sorts of different um, lichens and mosses. I've learned that things that are red, maybe secreting juices are a no-go. I feel like that's saying, don't eat me. I'm gonna call this one bleeding fungi. That is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. I saw a big group of them over there too. And I don't know what that is. It's some sort of fungus. That's oozing. It's hard, but it, yeah, it's like, it's like oozing. oozing. That's weird. All right. Oh my God. This is perfection. Hey, I'd say that's a usable one. I'm starting to get some worms in the inside but that's a good one found a keeper i'm gonna let ariel talk to you about this because i don't know much about these ones but i know that they taste really good <laughs> so this is what we call a squirrel kingdom we have a lot of these around this property and this is where bandit likes to take off to there's a bunch of squirrel holes out here and it looks like they eat the pine cones at our old property the spruce were having a there was a lot of beetle kill there so they were dead the spruce here are extremely healthy and alive, so the squirrel population is just like crazy here. But uh, this is just one of their little uh, homes out here. A foot deep. Or do you think this is That's one? That's all. So Eric's doing a really good job spotting these, and these are known as, I think a lot of people call them hawk's wing. I don't know why that one doesn't uh, work that well for me. I want to call it a uh, scaly hedgehog is the other name. So those are common names for this mushroom. And I'm going to cut this one down, even though it is definitely past its prime. I just kind of want to show you it to give you a good example. And you can tell because when they first start growing, they're usually a lot more pale and then they slowly get these like scales. It's what they're called. And you could probably see it does look like a hawk's wing, so I could definitely understand why it has that name. I've never found these until we moved here. We have the scaly version of a hedgehog. So there's also just a plain hedgehog or like a smooth cap hedgehog where you're not going to see these little points on them. And hedgehogs have teeth underneath them. And that's an indication that you have in fact found a hedgehog. Uh, I, I knew a lot about these before we actually found them. So they weren't too hard for me to identify when we actually first saw them out here. But I got pretty stinking excited when we found these probably less than a week ago because I had, I had told Eric there was not going to be any mushrooms here. It's just way too dry. And I was like, we're not going to see any mushrooms. And we are finding just an absurd amount of mushrooms on this property, including these, which are delicious. Some folks say they're bitter. I didn't find that to be true. We found some younger specimens and we cut them up, put them on pizza and they tasted absolutely amazing. They tasted a lot like a grocery store mushroom when you chop it up and cook it. So they had some good texture and good flavor in my opinion. We're gonna be keeping our eye out for some younger versions of these. We're in between flushes. These are the ones that happened probably a week to two weeks ago, and they're now a little bit older. We've had some rain, and I can tell that new mushrooms are starting to grow. We're just kind of having a hard time finding them. I can see what they look like on the inside. I bet it has worms. Oops. Look at his teeth. Yeah. I've never been to this part of the property, huh? Isn't that what it is? Bunny boo? Or caribou? No, that's not caribou. I think this is snowshoe hair droppings. Old. So this is a coral mushroom. Again, just a common name. There's a lot of different kinds of coral mushrooms. 
and I don't even know exactly what kind this one is. I know of these from back in Oregon because we harvested more like a, a white colored one there and it was edible. I'm about 100% sure that this one's edible. Um, we've yet to eat it and I'll just kind of pick this one off because it's a really good looking one and it's it looks like a yellow cauliflower. <laughs> so at this point I feel pretty comfortable at consuming this exact mushroom. We're really going for the hedgehogs, but we did want to find a younger one of these. A lot of them are getting pretty old. This one looks pretty good to me. So I know I saw another one earlier that we may pick that one instead. It's extremely hard. The stem's very solid. That's a perfect specimen. Absolutely perfect. Oh yeah, that is. The scales. A little bit of worms, but not oh, but bad. See how his teeth are not right. That's it. That's good. Look we'll at keep that. that. No problem. That's a big burl, huh? This is a really big burl. This is a spruce burl. And then over here we have some, I think it's turkey tail, but I always find it when it's a lot older and it grows on dead wood. These are aspen that they're growing on, but this tree's been down for a while. So like I said, it's, it's too old to harvest. So it should be a, it should be cream colored and have pores like on the other side. Do you want to see? That's real turkey tail. So this isn't a mushroom that you eat. It's a medicinal mushroom. Um, you can make tinctures. You can do probably all sorts of stuff with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually harvest these. These are, I thought they were too old, but these are, these are definitely really good. They are, were growing this season. That's so cool. That little guy. That little guy. I think I'm gonna make a, a tincture. That is, that is really. This is, this oh. is like, that's like the thickest one on our property. He's alive. Oh yeah, that's that. These things are so heavy, they have so much water in them. Oh man, he's a, that's what I thought, he's seen better days. Eric found this bolete, and we're not harvesting these today. These are a mushroom that we kind of found that we don't actually like all that much. So we harvested a whole bunch of them last year. It looks like a little loaf of bread. Pretty funny. This guy's old. You can tell. They have pores underneath. And then this one is, I think it's a scaber stalk. Not quite sure on that. So again, we have aspen and they grow with aspen. They grow with birch. There are many different types of boletes. And we, in the past, we've harvested king boletes. We've harvested these guys, I think. We found that when we cooked them, their texture was kind of squishy. It didn't really hold up that well. So what we did was we dried them and then we used them in canned food. We used them when we made some tomato sauce and they turned out amazing in that recipe. But um, like I said, this guy's just a little bit older. He's not looking so good no more. See his, uh, his pores. Hey, he doesn't have worms or nothing. No, he's kind of, they're kind of gummy. They're gummy. Like slimy. They're I don't not, like them. They're not that good. It looks like broccoli or cauliflower, huh? Look at that. It looks just like a cauliflower. Ripping it up. It looks like a, a leather. It does look like, like old leather. Well, I think we got more than enough for today. That didn't take us too long at all. I'm really surprised with how much different mushrooms we have out here. So just some really cool looking ones and we're gonna head back to the cabin and we're gonna cook some up. Get that one here. Uh, you're gonna have to break. Do you want me to rinse them off? Yeah, you can just rinse them. We're gonna eat them tonight anyways. Do you wanna so. bring a bowl of water out or? Sure. Oh, wow.
mushrooms are cleaned and ready for dinner. Uh, the first recipe we're making is actually a mushroom paste and we're not gonna be eating that tonight. This is a drying rack <laughs> and um, this is really awesome. I used to use a window screen for years until someone graciously gifted this to us. So we, uh, we use this all the time and it's got so many layers, which is the best part. And you can hang it, it's mobile, so you can hang it. Um, if you're getting rain, you can hang it in an enclosed space um, and it'll still get that airflow and that ventilation. It's also awesome because bugs can escape. Usually there's bugs in the things that you harvest and when you lay it in there, the bugs still have a way to be free. So I've got some fireweed and some raspberry leaves that we harvested. We're gonna be putting those in there. And if I did have extras, you literally can just put the mushrooms and layer them in there too. And it just depends on the moisture and the environment, how long they take to dry. Sometimes it can be as quick as a few days and sometimes it can take a little bit longer. And then from there, you can just store it in a jar. Another thing that's really awesome about this is that your flowers and lightweight materials can't go flying away on you. That has happened to me. So we'll leave it unzipped just a little. Let her dry outside. Sure. I guess I'll use a small pan then. Okay. Well, the wind picked up. Olive oil, you cook them in? Because we're going to blend everything together anyways. we got to caramelize them. That's good. The pate is really simple to make and it's it's honestly going to be like a mushroom spread. So we've got some onions that have been cooking and some chive butter and then the mushrooms, I think they've been cooking in olive oil. A little bit of salt and pepper. We're combining them now. We're going to cook them a little bit longer. I'm going to add the herbs. We have sage, rosemary, and thyme and oregano, I believe. Time to add our vermouth, or vermouth, I'm not sure how we're gonna call it, but it's a dry, I don't think it's a white wine. I think it's just, it's dry alcohol, we're gonna say. So we're gonna add some of this in here and burn it off. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. That was kind of a lot. Whoa. Okay, we're gonna turn that off and move it over to our food processor and get it blended. take the mixture out of the food processor and Eric brought out that immersion blender which always seems to do the trick and I'm gonna be completely honest I'm gonna just verify with Eric but this stuff's fantastic and I have a little bit of extra sourdough that we made earlier today we need it for dinner but we don't need this much so I'm gonna toast up a piece the plan was to uh, put this away in the fridge and eat it at a later date but I'm pretty sure we're gonna eat this tonight because it is so good it's so buttery and mushroomy and just caramelized onion goodness and then we're gonna move on to dinner mm. got something in there it's really good it's delicious for dinner we're having mushroom Papar dele, so it's an Italian dish, and I've got the mushrooms going, or sauteing with some butter and chives. These chives are from our old place, our old garden. Um, the chives do really well without anyone having to do anything to them, so eventually I'd like to get those moved up here. We are going to be making it creamy style, so with some cream, and we're also going to be topping it with some breadcrumbs, so we've got some of the sourdough crisping up there. This uh, dish, I think, really celebrates mushrooms. We put a lot of mushrooms. Eric's cooking up some noodles for us. We don't have the right type of noodle, but we're gonna be using some egg noodles. That's what we've got. That's probably the best smelling mushroom I've ever smelled. I, I, it's, I'm not sure which one it is, but it smells really good.
almost tastes like wine, but like a strong wine. So we're gonna add some more of the Vermouth. Cook that off and then I think we're gonna do like kind of a cream sauce. So we're gonna do half and half Parmesan cheese. We're gonna put the noodles in here. It smells like a pizzeria out here. It smells so good. Pizzeria. Oh, this is looking very good. Right, time to eat some dinner. Shall we? Oh, the croutons on top. We shall. Look at that mushroom. Is there... I didn't get a mushroom, but it's really good. Oh. I may quote unquote like say that these are actually my favorite mushroom. The, the what's it called? The hedgehog? Hedgehog, yeah, me too. There's so much flavor in these. Like, it's not mild mushroom flavor. It's just mushroom flavor. Strong mushroom. The texture is nice and chunky and thick and not hard, but what's the word I'm looking for? Firm. Firm. It's firm. It's not gummy at all. Here's it's the coral mushroom. Let's try that one. Oh. Any good? Yeah. Feels like you're eating a broccoli. The texture. Not a lot of mushroom flavor, but very good. That's a good, good mushroom. These I thought that was really good. It's very good. I don't know if it's because it was a, it, it has like some of the juices in there because of the small. Sometimes you get a mushroom or you pick a mushroom and it's not that good and you don't really like them. Mushroom papadillo. Mushroom papadillo. This is good. <laughs> this is an awesome way to celebrate the end of the day. We're going to be back out here tomorrow whipping up a few little things with uh, some berries that we have. Made it back outside and we have all of our stuff ready for what we want to make today which includes some blueberry mead we're gonna be making some raspberry jam and a awesome berry pie I've got to run and grab the berries from the freezer and Eric's gonna start with the blueberry mead because he has made it before last time I made mead although it made a very delicious drink I'm not sure there's any alcohol content to it. I don't know if we let it brew long enough. So what we're gonna do this time is we're gonna make the mead again, which is almost like a honey wine. So we're gonna be using honey, water, yeast, and we're also gonna make it with some blueberries this time. We're kind of cleaning out the freezer and cleaning out the pantry. The honey is last year's honey. It is a little crystallized, so it's, it's definitely older. I think we harvested like 15 pints of this and we have five left. We're gonna be using two today. We didn't harvest any from the bees this year and we're not going to. We're gonna kind of just let them do their thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat this honey up um, with a little bit of water. We're gonna to try to thin it out real quick. These two pints of honey should be about three pounds and then we got about a pound of blueberries we're gonna use and we're going for a gallon. We bought a new jug specifically for this recipe that I think is gonna be really cool to use. We've got an airlock, it's got a little uh, plug on there. So let's see how this goes. These are last year's blueberries, so they are frozen and I don't think it's gonna be a problem for the recipe at all. We actually have made blueberry wine before, which was very delicious. So I'm excited to have the blueberry in this mead. Let's get the rest of these in here. So this isn't exactly hot. It's just warm. The blueberries are frozen, so those are cold, and it's gonna cool the mixture down for us. And why that's important is we don't want it really hot when we add our yeast, and we're gonna be using a special kind of yeast. This is, uh, I think it's called champagne yeast. It's called D47, and it says wine yeast, so it's made for making wine. So let's get the rest of this in here, and then we're gonna top it off with the rest of our water, because we're going for about a gallon of mead total here. Decided to add some more blueberries here because we got them, so why not? We are gonna add our yeast nutrient, which is this one right here. We're gonna do a teaspoon, I think it says teaspoon. What is that on here? Yeah, one teaspoon per gallon. So we're gonna do out one teaspoon of that. We're gonna add our whole packet of yeast and then we'll get it topped off with our water. We're gonna leave just a little bit of room for like bubbling and fermented in here. So we'll fill it up to about right there.
So we're gonna put this airlock on there. We have a few of these. We've actually never used them, but I believe you put a little bit of water in there and it will allow the gases from the fermentation to escape, but it's not gonna let like bacteria or air get in through the top. So let's see if that's how it works. So I got water in there. I got it up to the where it says max. We'll stick it in. Make sure this is pushed down. And that put, that's pretty much it. So it's now kind of just a waiting game on this beverage to ferment for us. We're gonna keep this inside the house out of direct sunlight, kind of like a, like room temperature. And over the next couple of weeks, we'll do a few other steps. We'll rack it, we'll strain the berries out, we'll put it into a different jar and let it kind of age, I guess. I'm hoping it turns out good. We will keep you guys posted and uh, let you know how it tastes. Looking forward to this one. Well, it looks like the bees have joined us. Um, they're not quite in a dearth yet, so that means where they don't have any food, but I am noticing that the nectar flow is slowing, so uh, they are hot on anything sweet, especially their own honey. I have a, a big quart size, is this a quart size? I don't know what size this is right now, but this is our raspberries that we picked the other day and it is stuffed full, and we are going to be making preserves or I guess you could call it raspberry jam too. So we're leaving all the seeds and the berries in there. We're not gonna be using any pectin. I've read that they have a lot of pectin in them already, or they have a considerable amount. And if we cook them down a little bit slower with sugar, we should be able to get a nice sauce type consistency. Let's go ahead and heat up our jars. And we're also gonna get this cooking with some of the sugar. <laughs> Good. We let our berries heat up all the way before adding the sugar. We added about a cup. You could definitely add more than that, but I really like the tartness of the berries themselves. So this is this is perfect. We're gonna let this just simmer for probably about 10 minutes and I'm just gonna keep an eye on the consistency. And I am going to be adding some lemon juice, but first I'm gonna zest the lemon to save that for our pie. All right, that made four nice sized jars. I'm excited about that. Um, it thickened up way thicker than I expected for not using pectin. Um, I was scraping some off the side and it actually was just like I put pectin. It reminded me of fruit leather. So that is how jelly it was. We're gonna process these in a water bather for 10 minutes now. So we are starting on our berry filling and we are using four different kinds of berries all uh, harvested here in Alaska and these are the wild blueberries and huckleberries from last year we've got some raspberries these are not wild these are actually from our garden so we're gonna add those in there too and I find that raspberries don't really like hold up that well in the freezer so this is perfect for them these are cloud berries which are just lovely they taste like the most unique flavor they taste like custard not very attractive now, but um, they're quite beautiful when they're ripening. They have this like salmon color. They go from a peach to a salmon color. And we have some watermelon berries. And watermelon berries aren't really that flavorful here when they're first ripening, but near the end of the season or late summer, they turn this wine color and they're absolutely fantastic. To me, they taste just like raspberry. Our berry sauce has been cooking for about 10 minutes. I added a cup and a half of sugar in there and it's pretty liquidy because the berries were frozen. So I'm just trying to get some of that moisture off, but I'm gonna add the rest of our ingredients now. So we have the lemon zest that Eric kind of grated up for us earlier. And then I have the juice of, I think a tangerine. Um, I find that those, they're really sweet. It's almost even better than using the juice of a lemon. So we're gonna thicken this up now, add some cornstarch. We're using five tablespoons. Um, I had read you want to use just a hair more if you have a slightly runnier sauce like this. We got started on our pie dough yesterday, trying to keep it all chilled, and I'm just making the lattice for the top now.
So the pie dough is pretty much a traditional pie dough, but we have butter and lard in it to make it extra flaky. We have to get the generator on so we can get this in the oven. I'm very pleased with the sauce. It's, I don't know why, but it tastes like concentrated grape juice. That's probably the uh, watermelon berries. And it also tastes a little bit like blackberries. So this is our first time making a pie with the, this many berries. I think it's gonna turn out really good. Well, doesn't that look absolutely spectacular? This may be our best pie to date, and we're very excited to dig in. Let us know in the comments what your favorite pie is. I personally love pumpkin pie, and my neighbor makes a really awesome rhubarb pie. Eric says his favorite is chocolate soak, but this one may be a new favorite, so we're gonna dig in.